Golf is a game full of obstacles. You can have lakes, you can have bunkers, you can have little undulations, but in this instance, I find myself stuck behind some coconut trees and I need to figure out a way how to navigate myself from point A to point B without putting myself in any more trouble. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerry Gray here and today we are on Christmas Island and as you can see quite a bit of different scenery from what I usually shoot my golf tip videos in but I thought what better chance than to come out and show you some of the unique diversity of this beautiful landscape and also show you how to navigate some of the trouble that we may find ourselves if we're playing golf courses such as this. And in this instance I'm stuck about 100 meters away between here and where the pin is and we've got some big coconut trees, we've got some smaller palm trees and we've also got a frangipani tree tree just short of that pin. So what I need to do is I need to figure out a way of how to get my ball from here to there without hitting any of this trouble and make sure that I'm giving myself the best opportunity of saving my par. Now a lot of the time when you're in these situations you're always best to try and figure out can you play a stock shot and if I'm 100 meters out this would generally just be about a sand wedge or a pitching wedge but I'm looking at these palm trees all the way up here and I'm a bit worried that I won't be able to get enough height on it, especially if it clips one of those trees, it's just gonna drop down and it's gonna compound the error. So whenever you're working out the best way to play a shot, you need to consider all options. And I like to think about golf and strategy as in what is the worst possible miss. And a lot of the time, players don't actually think about this and it tends to lead them astray and hit shots which wouldn't really be conducive to making sure that they're giving themselves the best opportunity of not compounding an error that they would find themselves in. So for example, in this instance here, I've got about 100 or so meters to the green, but if I was to take a direct line to the pin, it is just bringing in unreal reasonable challenges with these trees up here and it's not worth the risk. I've got all this room out here over to the left so I'm going to work on playing a little curved golf ball just to start it out to the left and bring it back and run it up next to the green. So whenever you find yourself in a position like this first of all understand what could be your stock shot from this position and if I was hitting my stock shot I certainly am bringing in unnecessary error and risk and if that happens well it's very easy that I can turn a possible par into a double bogey or something worse and at the end of the day to play more consistent golf what you need to do is you need to eradicate those big errors those double bogeys those triple bogeys off your scorecard and a lot of that doesn't come from actually improving your technique it's more about your decision making and your tactics when playing the golf course and that's exactly what this video is here today so I can't play my stock shot so what I'm gonna look for is the next best option. So as I jump behind this golf ball, I can see that I've got a lot of room out here over on the left-hand side. And even if I don't curve the ball enough, well, it's just gonna leave me maybe about a 20 or 30 meter pitch up the green. And I've got a much better chance of actually getting my par than if I was to take an aggressive line over the top of the palm trees, where there's a good chance I could hit that and drop down and I'd actually be in a worse spot than I am at the moment. So straight away, what I've done is I've eliminated the worst possible miss and for me that would be hitting the trees in front so what I need to then do is I need to figure out what sort of trajectory I need to hit to avoid hitting those palm trees and try and get as close to the edge as I possibly can without bringing in the trees themselves okay so I'm trying to advance my ball about this hundred or so meters up near the green just so I've got some sort of chip onto it and then I've got my chance to hold that putt for par and I'd be very happy with that result so from there I've identified the sort of trajectory I need it doesn't need to be my stock shop needs to be quite a bit lower and I can see a palm tree in the distance here not only is that going to be a great target line but it's also going to be about the height that I'm looking to hit now when we're hitting these shots it's important to remember what creates height height is a result of speed and loft and what most recreational golfers do is they pull out a golf club with X amount of loft, let's say an 8-iron, and they have one speed. So therefore their 8-iron goes one height. However, what the professional does is he understands that when I take speed off a golf club, the ball is naturally going to launch lower as an effect of not having as much speed with the same amount of loft. So for example, in my hand, I've got a 6-iron. And if I hit a 6-iron, my peak trajectory, it's probably going to be high enough to hit those palm trees or get close. But without the speed, what's going to happen is my ball is naturally going to launch a little bit lower. And what most players do is they tend to play around with their ball position too much. They tend to try and put too much forward. They lean the handle too much. And all of a sudden that changes your delivery of the golf club into the ball. And it makes things a little bit too complicated than they need to be. 
Effectively, if you understand the height that the ball's gonna come off relative to the speed in which you swing, well, therefore, you're eliminating a lot of possible error simply because you can just play a, a relatively stock shot and produce the desired result. Now, I know my six iron from this 100 meter mark, if I just do a nice smooth half swing, well, there's no chance that ball's gonna launch too high and hit those palm trees, and that's why I've selected it for this shot. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna stand back and behind, and I'm gonna pick that as my target line, that palm tree just to the left of these little ones in the distance. I feel like if I start my ball there and I try and just get a little bit of left to right curvature, well, that's gonna put me in a great spot to then execute. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through this process. I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. So first of all, I'm gonna stand back and behind and I'm gonna draw a visual line from that palm tree back to the ball. And I'm gonna pick my intermediate target. Now I've done a lot of videos on this and this is incredibly important to ensuring your club face is aiming in the right direction. At the end of the day, club face is king and the ball is gonna start where your club face is aiming, especially with those lower lofted clubs. So we always need to make sure that we are making this your main focus. Always get your club face aiming where you want the ball to start, especially when you're hitting those low shots out of the trees. There's a common misconception that you wanna aim your club face where you want the ball to finish and swing in the direction in where you want the ball to start. However, that is simply incorrect. The ball is gonna start up to an 80% influence with a driver on the angle in which your club face is aiming. So therefore we need to make sure we're always getting our club face as a general rule of thumb, aiming in the direction in which we want the ball to start. And we actually swing in the direction in which we want the ball to curve away from. So let's break that down a little bit. So if I'm standing back and behind the golf ball, I've picked my selected club. So I've, I've got my six iron. I know the trajectory is gonna be fine. It's not gonna to go too high. I've then picked my intermediate target, which I'm gonna aim and just put my club face behind. I've got this little spot just in front. I'm gonna put my club face down there and I'm gonna check and I feel like that is aimed perfectly exactly where I want. Now, if I set up standard to this, what's gonna happen is my ball is gonna launch directly at that palm tree. And if I swing generally on line with the target, it's gonna stay pretty straight. But I wanna put a little bit of left to right curvature or a fade for the right hander, draw for the left hander. Now, if I'm gonna go about and do this, I just simply can't use my standard swing. I'm gonna to have to put a bit of shape on my swing. And this is also another common error that a lot of players make. They try and manipulate their motion too much. They might try and go across the ball. But simply when you do that, effectively what happens is you change the delivery of the club. It gets too steep and you might jam that club down into the ground. So what we need to do in the easiest way to change the shape of your swing is to simply adjust your alignment. What happens then is you'll get some sort of deflecting blow on the ball, which will then impart some spin and get that ball curving in your desired direction. So for us to do that, seeing as I want a little bit of left to right curvature on this one, once I've stood behind, I've picked my intermediate target just in front, I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna line my club face up at that point, and if I look at the target and I get myself set, well, I'm just going to be pretty well directly on line with where I wanna go. Now, if I want a little bit of left to right curvature, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna leave my club face there so you can see I'm taking my hands off the golf club and I'm going to shift my whole alignment to the left. So that means my feet, that means my hips, that means my shoulders. Now, what this does, if I just keep that ball in the same spot, it's going to naturally encourage this golf club to work on an out to in motion, which is gonna produce that curvature. And seeing as my club face has started at my palm tree, which is my target in the distance, well, I'm pretty confident that the ball's gonna start on line with that tree and then have a little bit of left to right curvature as we get back. Now, the important thing here is to not overdo it. At the end of the day, I'm better off missing it out to the left than I am in overcutting it too far out to the right. So I've just gotta be careful and mindful that I'm not trying to overdo this too much. Now, the beautiful thing about shifting your alignment rather than trying to manipulate your swing is you can actually just be comfortable within your golf swing motion. You don't need to do anything drastic to produce a desired result. I can just swing normally. And what we'll generally tend to see is we'll get a little bit of curvature. Now, even if it doesn't quite work out and the ball goes pretty straight, it's not the end of the world. I'm still just gonna have a close chip onto the green and a good chance for my par. However, if I get a little bit of curvature, well then I might be able to sneak it up on the green and hopefully get that birdie. So let's run you through this. I'm gonna stand back and behind. So I've picked my club, I know my trajectory. I've got my intermediate target. I'm gonna step in. I'm gonna line my club face first with the palm tree in the distance. Looking at the palm tree, I'm gonna set my body. I'm gonna take my hands off the golf club. I'm gonna shift my alignment to the left. That means my path is gonna be left of where my club face is. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my little half swing. Let's see how we go.
That one came off really nice, had that nice little bit of curvature, started pretty well on line with my intended target and cut back to the right. So I'm very happy with how that one worked out. As you can see, I didn't really need to do anything too outrageous with my golf swing to get that curvature. It's really at the end of the day about following a process, understanding the concepts of where the ball starts is going to generally be on line with the club face and then curve away from the direction in which you swing. So if you find yourself in some trouble, a general rule of thumb is see if you can pick your stock shot first. If you can't do that, find out what the worst possible miss is, avoid that at all costs, figure out what trajectory you need, what club you need to select, aim your club face in your intended starting line, and then swing in the direction in which you want the ball to curve away from. The easiest way to do that is simply shift your alignment. So I hope this helps next time you find yourself in trouble and you don't put yourself into a position where you're compounding those errors. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, I'm Kerry Gray. Thanks for watching.